Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying You Are Secure. Know Who You Are in Christ, Part 2, based on Your Identity in Christ by Neil T. Anderson. In this session, we'll be looking at Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Know that condemnation is over. Let's read that, that text, Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 1. There is, therefore, now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the, of the, uh, of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit, which dwells in you. Many Christians live continually condemning themselves. We have the life of the Lord Jesus Christ within us. He saved us by taking our sin on himself. There's no more condemnation because we have been forgiven. And yet many believers find this concept hard to believe, free from condemnation. Why? Well, the reasoning. Jesus died for my sins. I'm forgiven for the sins I've committed. But what if I sin tomorrow? Well, look at Romans chapter 6 and verse 10. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. The Old Testament sacrifice system couldn't get it done. They kept bringing the, the animals to be sacrificed for sin and then they practically have left from bringing that sacrifice that they've sinned again and they need to bring more. That system couldn't get it done. The priests work 24 seven, taking the people's offerings and they just had to keep bringing more and more and more and more. The priests never rested. When Jesus died once for all sins, how many sins were in the future? They all were. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Why no more condemnation? We are in Christ. The cross of Calvary is critical. As sinners, we deserved condemnation in our former unsaved state. But God offers a pardon in Christ by the cross. We're pardoned. We are free from the law of sin and death. 
And we're able to love God by the help of the Holy Spirit. Those in Christ can live the new life in him. Will believers still sin? Well, of course. First John chapter two and verse one. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Living our lives as we sin, we have Jesus before the Father. Ah, look, this one sin. Jesus steps forward. No, he's one of mine. He's covered with my righteousness. And 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When Jesus forgives our sins, it's like we never sinned. We're forgiven and then we're, it's all wiped away all of our unrighteousness. So what does this mean for Christians? There's no condemnation. Well, from this passage, we can, we can see three results of being in Christ. First of all, believers don't have to fear God's condemnation. Verse one, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. We've escaped judgment for sin and the punishment of hell. We now have eternal life and heaven as our hope. And we can never lose it. Don't let anybody tell you that. Why? Because salvation is the work of God, not of man. You are pardoned if, well, look at Romans 8, 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. First John chapter four, verse, verse 17, down to verse 19. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Listen, those in Christ don't have to fear God's wrath. We did not choose to love God. God loved us and in response, we loved him. Second, believers do not have to allow sin to reign. Verse two, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Has made me free. Verses 10 and 11, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. You don't have to sin, but how do you avoid temptation to sin? Well, the key is in Romans chapter six in verse 11. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord, dead to sin, examining self for sin. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 31, 32. And Paul talks about when he's given the formula and talking about Jesus instituting the Lord's Supper. He says in these two verses, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. In 1986, Gordon MacDonald was the president of InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. He was admired and respected by countless people throughout the Christian community. Within a year, he was a broken man. 
he had committed adultery. By 1988, he was on the long road to healing, and he wrote a therapeutic book which dealt with his own brokenness, Rebuilding Your Broken World. In this book, MacDonald shared an experience which took place several years before his adulterous relationship. While on campus to speak at a college commencement, he struck up a conversation with a, a school board member. After some pleasantries, the new acquaintance asked, if Satan were to blow you out of the water, how do you think he would do it? I'm not sure I know, said McDonald. All sorts of ways, I suppose. But I know there's one way he wouldn't get me. And what's that? He'd never get me in the area of my personal relationships, answered McDonald. That's one place where I have no doubt I'm as strong as you can get. Listen, Satan is wise and powerful. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. That's what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 12. And then third, believers do not have to walk in the flesh. Verse one again, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Do not walk according to the flesh. In Victor Hugo's book 93 about the French Revolutionary War, a ship is caught in a, in a terrible storm. The crew's plight is further compounded by the realization that a cannon is loose below deck. Every wave turns the unchained cannon into an internal battering ram. Two brave, sold, two brave sailors risk their lives to go below and secure the loose cannon. On their descent into the ship, they discuss the fact that the cannon within is more dangerous than the storm without. Although there is much to fear in life, our greatest danger is the sinful nature within us. So how do you know if you're in the spirit or in the flesh? Well, it's easy in actual practice. Galatians chapter five, verses 19 to verse 23, the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Let me ask you, how are you walking? If you display an outburst of anger, what's the problem? If someone's forcing you to be angry, is someone forcing you to be angry? Is your anger the deed of someone else's flesh? No, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16 says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We must assume responsibility for our attitudes and our actions. Those who are in Christ no longer need to fear condemnation. Those who are in Christ can live a victorious Christian life. The only way a person can be condemned is to be found without Christ on the judgment day. But let me ask you, are you ready for that day? You have a great day.